a lot of power, smallish case, but wasn't easy. Welcome to Simple Rub. On this episode, I'm going to be going over what it was like to build in the P200A and hopefully prepare you for when you go to build in this and kind of give you some tips and things either I should have thought more about when I was building or, you know, things that would have saved me a lot of time. With that, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I will be doing a test on the difference in basically temperature from vertical mounting and horizontal mounting in the P200A and kind of give you an idea of what the difference is going to be um, when you run those two options anyways because this may not speak for every case but it is going to give you a pretty decent idea of what to expect in variables. So overall I would say the build was at an easy to medium level as in there were a couple annoyances but Overall, it was rather easy to build in. Now, not sure quite where to start, but let's start with the AIO, for instance. 240 AIO in there. Now, I did go with the Arctic, which is a little bit thicker, so that might have caused a little bit of issues. Um, I'll show some B-roll to give you a better idea of this, but up here is a power switch, right? You can see it on top there. Now, it's kind of shaped like a P, as in there's a part of the board that sticks out and has wires on it. Now, I don't know if my case is the only one that came like that or all of them come like that. The board was facing this way with the wires this way. Now, what that meant was the AIO would not fit. Luckily, it is a mirrored mounting, right? So you can unhook that board, switch it around, but then, when you do that, you have the wires shooting out front and hanging down. So I did have to put a zip tie up in there to hold that out of the way. So that is just something to be aware of when you're trying to put a 240 AIO in there. Now, that could just be because the Arctic does have a thicker radiator. Could have been the only issue. But, I would still make sure to watch for that. As in, if you kind of ram it in there too hard, you do have the chance of breaking one of those connectors or damaging that board. And that does control your power button. So when I went through and did this, I put in the motherboard and then the power supply and then ran the cables. I would recommend putting in the power supply after all your cables are ran. What I ran into was once that was in, it was a little difficult getting the wires, especially your um, CPU power. That one is really don't have much room as you can see once you have the power supply in there so that was a little bit difficult now you can go through and run all your fan hookups and all of that basically before doing anything right so i put the motherboard in and then i did all of the wire routing for the case and the fans and got that all hooked up and then i put the power supply in and then i ran all of the power supply cables and then i did the vertical mount. That brought in its own challenge, really. Now, part of that, of course, is the AIO I went with. What you'll see with the Arctic is everything comes straight out. So what this does is it kind of pushes on the graphics card, and this is it's a big graphics card, right? 3070 Ti, and it's basically a triple slot. They call it two and three quarter, but it, it I mean, the shroud on it sticks out to your third slot, so it does take up a lot of room. But it also comes close to where, you know, the lines are coming off of this processor, which made that difficult. So I would still recommend if you're going vertical to put the graphics card in last. Um, in fact, even horizontal, I think I would still run that last. Now, I will be switching this out to go horizontal for the performance test. But if it's not a drastic difference, I will be putting it back and keeping it vertical because I really like the way it looks. Now, another thing when you're building, you can put the 140s on the front and you can run them outside of the frame. But one thing to watch for is your clearance on this, right? So I would recommend putting them in there, having them almost tight, but just enough loose 
that you can slide them up and down so that you can fit this back on and then tighten those up. Because there are some, if your fans are too high or too low, it will prevent you from putting this on. I made the mistake of fully tightening them. It wouldn't fit, and then I did have to loosen them, adjust them, pop it on there, tighten it. So, it's not a whole lot of work if you don't do it and you have to adjust it, but it is easier if you do it that way the first time around. So now, cable management. The nice thing about this case is it does have your RGB function on the front, right? So that, if you can kind of see it in here, does have a SATA power, which caused its kind of own issue with where the power supply is. So with your power supply being up this way, you really could have used a little more length on there. Because what ended up happening is it gets very difficult to put the back plate on when you've got this hooked up, just because it is a wide connector. And really, that's kind of pulling both of them to the extreme to get it hooked up. Now, one thing you'll notice when doing this case is there's a channel down here, right? You would think you could put cables in there. Do not do that. So what that channel is actually for is the back plate slides up in there and then you slam it closed. So if your cables are in there, you're not closing the case. Again, that was something I learned the hard way. Now I do have all of the fans jumped and they're all set up on one. So that's nice. And really, the wiring still has plenty of room to hide down here. The channel here is actually very nice. One thing I'm gonna bring up that I'm gonna have to figure out how to cover is right in here, you can see all those wires. Now if your cables are black, chances are you're not gonna notice. However, I have custom cables that are red and black. So you can see kind of this mess right here. And it's not, it's not horrible, but it's really not as clean as what I would like to see either. Now the power supply mounting is pretty straightforward. You've got these two thumb screws that you pull off you hook this bracket to the power supply, then you slide it in there and you hook these back up. That was actually rather easy and really fit well. And then from there, I, like I said, I would wait to do that though because it does make running the cables a little bit difficult. Now, your vertical and horizontal is rather straightforward as well. You have a screw here, a screw there, and a screw there. So those three screws come off. You reconfigure this so that this goes here and this will go there and it's put those three screws back in. That was also very easy. And I think the last thing to mention, which I'm, I'm torn on whether I like it or not. So you've got this plate right here for mounting your solid state drives. And now that hooks from a thumb screw. Now in order to put these on, you have to undo this thumb screw, take the whole plate off mount them, then put it back on and then hook up your cables. So that's not too bad really, but it does mean that, say if I wanted to add a second one, I've got to unhook these cables, unhook that, pull it off, attach the new one, pop it back in there, hook up those cables, and then hook up a second set of cables. Judging by how often people are probably gonna do that, I don't know that it's really an issue, but it's not something that I really liked. However, it is, it does save room by doing that because then you don't have the extra plate that you have, you would have to attach. So pros and cons, right? Now these guys are pretty easy as well and they're actually pretty nice for this. I guess I said solid state would be last to lie. Let's go over the channel real quick. Now you've got your cable channel. You have a nice little belt strap up here and another strap down here. And then you have these two channel mounts and really with that, kind of takes care of the need for zip ties. Now, as you can see, I do still have some up here and it does really contain all the cables quite well. I will say that, you know, even with this, putting the back plate on was a little difficult. So I would, I would recommend getting cable extensions because what you run into with cable extensions is a lot of extra cable to hide that is going to be difficult to do on this case. You're gonna run into that extra cable stuff somewhere. Now with that, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Like I said, it's not, it's not horrible to build in and it's nice and compact. Now it is definitely still more of a mid tower than a small form factor, but it's not, still not very big. And 
You know, there's quite a bit of power in here. And performance-wise, I'm happy with the cooling. So don't forget to subscribe and, you know, comment and like down below too. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see going with the theme on this thing. I got a little bit of acrylic work to do and some painting, so I'll be back with another video or, you know, I guess two more videos on this case as we do the, the vertical and horizontal performance test and then we do kind of the overall custom look of the case. Um, with that, thank you for watching.